Hello and welcome to Blender Basics with Studio X. As the hub for extended reality at the University of Rochester, Studio X fosters a community of cross-disciplinary collaboration, exploration, and peer-to-peer -peer learning that lowers barriers to entry, inspires experimentation, and drives innovative research and teaching in immersive technologies. Before we start, everyone is a learner in Studio X. Immersive technologies often have a steep learning curve and require diverse skills, perspectives, and experiences. All you are students, faculty, and staff are welcome at Studio X. It doesn't matter if you've never heard of XR or developed your own XR hardware. We are a community that celebrates curiosity and collaborative interdisciplinary learning. A little bit about me, my name is Nestle. I'm currently a senior majoring in Digital Media Studies and Data Science at the University of Rochester. I'm a CARP Library Fellow, and I work as the Public Programs Coordinator at Studio X. Today, I'll be teaching you all about 3D modeling and Blender. Here is a roadmap of what we'll be covering in this tutorial. First, we will be talking about general 3D modeling principles and some concepts we'll be using today, followed by an introduction to Blender, its interface, and settings. After that, we'll be ready to start and model our teddy bear, which we'll, we will spend the most time on. Then we will wrap up with resources for your future projects. At the end of this tutorial, you will have a 3D model bear like this. I have modeled this bear in Blender 2.9, but any newer version should work as well. First, some 3D modeling basics. While 3D modeling, as the name suggests, you create and shape objects in a 3D space. This means that the objects you model can be manipulated in all three axes, X, Y, and Z. All models you will create will consist of vertices, edges, and faces. You shape models by manipulating these three building blocks. You can think of vertices as points, edges as lines, and faces as surfaces. All three of them together make up what is called a 3D mesh. Here you can see a 3D mesh of a cube, and here you can see the 3D mesh for a human body. While modeling, the most common path is to move from primitive objects to the desired model by shaping the vertices, edges, and faces of the selected primitive object. On screen, you see all the built-in primitive objects in Blender, with the inclusion of a monkey, which is primarily used for testing purposes. For example, while you could create a donut using any of these shapes, starting with a torus would be the easiest. There are four main operations you can perform on objects. Translate, rotate, scale, and extrude. Translate basically means changing the location of the object with respect to the three axes. Rotating is changing its angle and scaling is changing of its size. And extruding basically means creating more geometry out of selected geometry. Here you can see that while we extrude one single face, we create four more faces around it. Basically, we multiply the vertices of the selected geometry and we connect the existing geometry to the new ones. And of course, while we mostly will extrude faces in this tutorial, you could also extrude vertices and edges as well. A little bit on materials and textures. A material, based on the Blender guide, defines the optical properties of an object. So this is what the object is made out of. It could be metal, it can be wooden, it can be made of glass, and texture is what defines the material. For example, an object could be made of metal, but it could be red, or it could have a flower pattern on it. The color and the pattern on the material is named texture in Blender. And here you can see all three properties that define a material. To be able to assign and manipulate texture of an object, we use a process called UV mapping, which is the mapping of a 2D texture on a 3D object. First, we unwrap the 3D model, like so. Here you can see the unwrapped version of this model. We assign the unwrapped surface area, a texture, and we paint that texture. And Blender, for us, wraps that texture back into our model and colors our model. This is what we'll be using to be able to color our teddy bear as we like. 
So what is Blender? You can 3D model on many platforms. Why are we using Blender? Blender is an open source and free 3D modeling platform. And because it's open source and free, it has an extensive user community. So if you're stuck, you can easily get help and you don't have to pay to use it. With Blender, you can create assets for your films, games, animation, XR application, anything that uses 3D models. A little note on Blender and keyboards. Because there are many, many, many shortcuts, Blender assumes that you have a number pad, which is this little extension on your keyboard. If you have a regular laptop, you probably don't have that, but don't worry. I'll show you how to emulate a number pad. However, keep in mind that this will make you lose some of the shortcuts and also keep in mind that the default setting in Blender is to use a number pad. As I mentioned before, there are many, many, many shortcuts in Blender. Although you don't have to know all of them, you'll have to use shortcuts. You cannot just use your mouse everywhere or else this tutorial will take you hours. But don't worry, we were not gonna use that many. <laughs> Here we have Blender's user interface. The pink part is what we call a 3D viewport. This is where you're gonna see your project, manipulate your project, this is your workspace. Here in this blue area, you have the hierarchy, you have the camera, lights, your models, everything in your scene will be here. And this yellow window right here is for properties. You're gonna add modifiers, you're gonna add materials, and you're gonna change the settings and properties of your model from here. Let's get started. First, we will start with navigating the Blender user interface and 3D space in general. You can take a screenshot, write these down. I'll also show you in a second. These shortcuts are to change your view. You can rotate your model, you can zoom in your model. Sometimes you wanna look at your model from a 90 degree angle from the front and these shortcuts will help you out and let's just play around with these this is what you see when you first open blender you have your 3d mesh here 3d viewport here the hierarchy and the properties before we get started we need to adjust some settings you go to edit preferences input and i have emulate numpad clicked because i don't have a numpad which means I'll be using one, two, and three to change between views. Those with a numpad will use one, two, and three to change with change within editing modes, which is for editing vertices, edges, and faces. You'll see what I mean in a second. For that, I'll be using tab. Again, you'll see in a second. And if you don't have a three button mouse, which means a mouse without the middle mouse button, You'll want to click that and it's going to replace your middle mouse button with an alt and left mouse click. Now that we get this out of the way, I zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. I rotate by clicking the middle mouse button. In my case, it is the scroll wheel. And I pan using shift and middle mouse button. You need to practice around these a little bit because You'll use these controls a lot while modeling. And if you want to see your model from the, say, x-axis, you can just click X here, Z for Z, and Y for Y. Similarly, you can use 1 for front view, 3 for side view, and 7 for top view. These are gonna give you the exact measurements because if you wanna look from the front, you might think this is front, but then you might select some things that are here that you don't really see and you don't want that. So we're just gonna use one for front, three for side, seven for top view. Now get comfortable with these, pause the video here, and once you're comfortable, let's move on to the next step. Now that you're comfortable with moving around in the 3D viewport, we're gonna start modeling. First, we're gonna add a cube. We're gonna add some mirror modifiers and subdividers to our cube, which we're gonna understand in a second. We're gonna name our cube, and after shaping it with vertex manipulation, remember how I mentioned you can 
build models by manipulating three building blocks. This is one of them. By vertex manipulation, we're gonna create ears. We're gonna use move, size, rotate, and extrude in this step. So first, we need to adjust our setting. Go to Edit, Preferences, Key Map, and I click Tab for Pie Menu and Extra Shading Pie Menu Items. This will let me switch between modes by using Tab. This is what I mean. I quite like this because it lets me see the mode I'm entering into and I think it's quite useful for beginners. And the second setting we're going to change, we're going to go to edit, preferences again, we're going to go to add-ons and we're going to add loop tools. Make sure this is clicked. And let me turn on screen cap. Oh, okay. It's on already. Um, loop tools, you're going to see it when we use it, but it just adds a few more tools to create loops out of open holes. So now we have a cube, um, a primitive object, but we want a more flexible primitive object. So we're going to apply subdivision surface. Again, here, add modifier, subdivision surface, and I'm going to load it up to two. What it does, it's, it's basically taking a surface and dividing that surface by two. So if you have more faces than normal. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this and rename this object to head. Now I'm going to the front view up by pressing one and I'm switching the view into wireframe, which lets me see through. And if you don't see, see through, make sure this is also selected, which is the x-ray. Now what I'm going to do is just delete half of this model. So we can just add a mirror modifier, which is going to just duplicate this side onto this side. I'm tabbing into edit mode and I'm on vertex editing mode. I'm selecting these ones, pressing delete, vertices, and now I have half a model. I use x-ray so we can see the vertexes that are in the back and I use front view so I'm creating a clear cut. Now we can just get out of this mode and we're going to add a mirror modifier. Select clipping so it just connects seamlessly but do not apply. Not applying a modifier means that you can work on your model as if there's an applied modifier but while Blender is still processing, it's going to process the, the geometry without the modifier. So it's easier for um, Blender and easier for us to work with. And I still want this to be a little smoother, so I'm going to add another subdivision modifier. I'm going to level up to two. I'm not going to apply this either. As you can see here, um, we still have the same amount of vertices, but it looks like we have more. If we apply it, let's say we can only apply it in object mode, by the way. Let's say we apply it, then this is our model period. This is how many vertices we have, but we don't want this because that's going to complicate the editing process. So this is the vertices this is we're working with, but it's going to become this once we apply the subdivision modifier. Now we want to shape this, what do you want to call it, a sphere um, towards the shape of a head. So I'm going to go into front view by pressing one. In editing mode, I'm opening proportional editing by clicking here. And I'm just going to choose vertices and I'm going to move them around by pressing D. And what this proportional editing option does is that when I'm moving these vertices, it's also going to affect the vertices outside a little, so it looks smoother. I'm pressing G. This is the area of proportional editing. As you can see, it doesn't get affected outside the circle too much. 
I'm going to make this a little uh, long shape. I'm clicking. I'm just playing around. Just depends on the shape you want. I'm also pressing 3 for side view. And I'm also editing the sides and front view by, by 1. It says numpad one, but it's actually just one. It's just I'm emulating numpad, so thinks I'm using numpad, whereas I'm just pressing one. So this is the head shape I want, but you're welcome to just come up with your own head shape. It's your own bear anyway. So to make ears, we're gonna delete one of the vertices. Let's click somewhere empty so we don't select anything. I think judging from the front view here would be nice for an ear. I'm just going to delete this vert vertex. Delete vertices. And you can see that it just mirrors what we have done. And we have this hole. And if you remember, when we clicked loop tools, I told you that we can shape this loop however we want because we added those tools. So I'm just going to select all these vertices by just clicking, pressing shift and clicking all of them. And now I'm right clicking, loop tools, circle. And now we have a circle. This is the circle that the ears are gonna come out. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. Maybe scale it down a little. What you do is entirely up to you. It's up to how you want your teddy bear's ears to look like. I'm pressing 1 for front view because view actually matters in Blender because you don't want to select unwanted vertices. For example, if I had this vertex also chosen, let's say this one, if I performed any operation on these, this vertex would be moving with these loop vertices and we don't want that. I'm just going to deselect this by pressing shift select. Front view and then I'm going to ex extrude. If you remember we're going to create more geometry and then we're going to build an ear here. I'm pressing E for extrude and once I'm happy I'm pressing left E again for another one pressing left and I'm, I want to scale this down and you don't want to do this with proportional editing so I'm turn this up now scale it down as you can see the other vertices aren't being affected by this operation E again don't forget to left click to set the E S again left click to set it and maybe this was a little too high up so I'm going to press G bring it down and I'm happy with these ears. Now we have this hole here and we want it to close and I achieve this by pressing M at center. But as you can see, the hole got a little smaller because it closes up there. So what I want to do is just go back, control Z, extrude a really small surface just like that and now close it to preserve these vertices outside. M at center. As you can see, these vertices stay the same. The newly added extruded surface became the lid, if you will. Now we're basically done with the head, but I want this, um, the part where the ear attaches the head a little smoother. So I'm going to press Control R to add um, a loop here. Um, I'm just going to press left click when I'm happy with the selection it gives me here. I'm going to move it down a little to make the transition sharper. As you can see from the other side as well, how sharp it becomes. I think I'm happy with it around here. And now we have our teddy bear's head. Our next step is creating the teddy's body. We'll basically use pretty much the same steps. Um, as the previous step, but we're gonna perform those steps on a new object 
which will be Teddy's body. And we're going to use loop tools to create arms and legs using the same method. Create a circle, loop, and extrude. So this is where we left off. We want to add another object. It's going to be the body. For that, I'm switching to object mode. Adding a new object by pressing Shift A, Mesh, Move. Um, for this step, I'm just going to hide the head for now. I'm going to name this body, and I'm starting with the same step. Subdivision surface, 2, apply this one, 1 for front view, wireframe, with x-ray on in edit mode. I'm selecting these vertices delete. And now we have half a sphere. Now we're adding hair modifier with clipping. Do not apply it. I don't apply it. And I'm adding subdivision surface two with two. I don't apply this either. Now we're going back to the um, default mode. And now we can um, spin up the head, but make sure body is still the selected object. Now I'm going to go into object mode. The body selected, I'm going to press G and Z right after. So I can only move it in Z axis. And I'm happy with the body being out here. Let's see. Looks good to me. Front view again. And now we're just going to shape the body just as how we shaped the face. Um, I'm going to turn on proportional editing. Choose these vertices. I can't see the vertices, but I know that they're there. Um, pressing G. Turning down the radius of proportional editing. Maybe something like this. This is entirely up to you. And from the side view, it's looking quite chubby. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll keep him chubby. From the front view, this is the body. We're going to create arms the same way we created ears. We're going to make a circle loop, and from there, extrude size and move and for this step i turned off proportional editing because i just want to deal with one single vertex and i think this could be nice for an arm so i'm going to this vertex i'm pressing alt and left mouse button to choose all vertices around the loop right click loop tools circle and now we have a circle hole and notice how our changes are being mirrored on the other side because our mirror modifier is still active. Once we apply it, it's submitted and it's done. So it's no longer going to mirror the changes from this side to this side. So that's why we keep it active. Um, I will start by sizing this down a little, moving it up. I'll rotate it down a little bit. so. My teddy bear is in a relaxed position. Now I'm hitting E for extrude. E again. Maybe size it down a little here. And the same way, we're gonna um, close this hole. I'm gonna extrude a little surface so we can preserve our previous geometry. And press M. At center, now we have two cute little arms. And um, the same idea, I want this transition to be sharper, so I'm going to press Ctrl R to add a loop. Move, move it close to the body to make the transition a little bit sharper. And we're just going to repeat the same steps for uh, arms. Oh, sorry, 
for likes. I'm just going to press somewhere empty. We're going to add the leg the exact same way. We're going to do the vertex, delete, loop tools, and then extrude and resize. Um, just pay attention not to choose vertices that are closer to the center. Then we're going to have big holes like this. And we don't want that. So I'm just going to delete this one. Alt somewhere here to choose all the vertices around the loop. Loop tools, circle. From the front, it looks like this. They probably need a lot of moving around and resizing. So I'm going to size it down a little, rotate it, rotate it down, and moving it closer. Now I'm hitting E, rotating it a little, E again, E, now I'm extruding the really small surface to close it off, again to preserve previous geometry, M at center, so now you have your legs. I would like to deal with body proportions so he looks less like a sphere so I'm going to press 3 choose vertices that I want to shape a little more and press G to move them around yeah he's he has more of a body now similarly to make this transition softer front view control R and moving it closer. I'm just adding geometry so the transition is a little sharp. And now we are done with the body. If you decide that you're happy with the geometry and you're not gonna edit anything else, now is the time to apply the modifiers. And you can only apply them in object mode. Same for the head. Now we are truly done with the head and the body. The next step is fairly simple. We're going to create the Teddy's eyes, which are going to be just two symbols of yours. In Blender, I'm pressing in object mode, because if you add another object in edit mode, you're going to attach the object to the existing object instead of creating an independent object on the hierarchy. So make sure you're on the object mode. Pressing Shift A, mesh, just use a sphere. Size it down. So the new objects you place always are on the origin. So this sphere is basically inside the teddy's head right now. So I'm pressing 3 for side view. As you can see, this is the y axis. So I'm pressing G and Y to only move it in the y axis. I think this is pretty good. Front view, G and X to move it only in X, X axis a little bit bigger. And now we have uh, the first eye. I'm just going to name this. L for left eye. Repeating the same process. For side view, G, Y to move it, and one for front view. G, X, and now I'm just pressing G to place it. I think it looks pretty nice. Um, my model is looking kind of cartoonish, but honestly, I like it. So I'll just keep it like that. But if you prefer a more realistic approach, you could move 
the eyes a little bit more inside. Let's do this one. I bet. And you have two lives. This step will prepare our model for texture painting. As I mentioned before, to be able to assign a texture, first we need to unwrap our model. And for this, Blender needs to know where the seam is, basically where it should break down the surface area of the object and open it up on a 2D surface. So we can add an image, a texture, and paint it. So now we need to tell Blender where our seam is. Basically, this separates the front from the back. So in object mode, I'm clicking the body. Now we need to edit mode. And this is where the separation is clearest. So I'm pressing Alt and clicking one of the edges. Make sure you're on the edge select mode. So now, if you're lucky, it's going to choose the correct seam all the way around but if not don't worry we're going to add the seam part by part so I'm pressing ctrl E mark seam I'm doing this for the top part as well ctrl E mark seam and see now this part is missing Control E. Mark seam. Checking my model. This part is missing. And mark seam. Now we should have a seamless seamless seam, if you will. <laughs> now Blender knows how to unwrap our 3D model. So I'm going to open the UV editor and we need another workspace for that. So what, once you see these four little lines, you just drag it towards left. And it's just going to duplicate the window we were on. This is Teacher Nessie from Edit Stage. I just wanted to add some details on how to open a new workspace. So remember how I said you can open a new window when you see these four lines over here. I would recommend um, pressing on left mouse click until the symbol we want, the new workspace symbol, opens up. Because if you're on this left part of this window, let's say, let's um, keep pressing on left mouse button. If I do this, do you see this arrow? If you see this arrow, it's going to close the hierarchy and join it to our 3D viewport. The symbol we want to see is this one. If I keep pressing, it's going to open a new window. So again, just keep pressing on left mouse button until you see the symbol you want. This is the one, so I keep dragging. You also don't want to move the hierarchy around like this. So just pay attention to that. It's a little complicated to organize Blender once you mess it up. I want to change my workspace. I'm clicking this editor type symbol and I'm choosing UV editor. So basically, I'm just going to unwrap my model here. Now I'm pressing A to choose everything. I'm pressing U, unwrap. It's just unwrapped our 3D model based on the seam um, we defined. So we want, the, we want to have this um, image organized because our texture will be placed onto these and then we're going to paint the image that's placed on top of this. So we're basically just saying just telling Blender if there's red here, paint this part red. We're just basically mapping this 2D unwrapped portion to our model. To be able to move these around after clicking here, Control L, and just sizing it down, moving it around to make space for the others. Control L, size it down. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing for our other objects. It disappeared, but don't worry, it's still here. 
open object mode. I'm choosing the head. I can make this window smaller for now. Edit mode. We're going to mark the seam. Alt. Um, probably here is the clearest. Again, it didn't choose the whole thing. If it does for you, you're lucky. But if it doesn't, no worries. Control E. Mark seam. I'm just repeating the same thing. Just checking if it goes all the way. Now it does. Now we have a continuous seam. I'm going back to... Actually, no, I'm staying here. I'm just pressing A to select everything. And now you unwrap. This is how the head looks. Pressing here, control L, size it down. Maybe a little up here, this one. Similarly, size it down. A little up here. Maybe a bit smaller. Doesn't matter how small you make it. It's again just telling Blender the coordinates of where the unwrapped portion of a specific point in our model is. So it doesn't matter if you size this up or down. And our other map is still here. If you press control, sorry, in object mode, if you choose both models, shift, if you go to edit mode, press A, you can see that they're all here. Going back to object mode, Choosing this eye, edit mode. The mark would be around here. Though it wouldn't matter because it's a perfect sphere. I'm just marking the seams just like we've done before. Pressing A, U, unwrap. Similarly, Control L. I'm going to move them maybe here. I'm doing it for the other eye for the last time. A, U, unwrap. And maybe to move this, we want to see where the others are. So I'm just going to press, um, select all the models we have here. I'm still holding shift. Now in edit mode, press A. Now everything's here. These two are the ones we just added. Where they are really doesn't matter, you just add them somewhere you're comfortable with. Well, I'm happy with this map. Now we're gonna assign a texture, an actual image file into this map, and we're going to paint our teddy bear. In the next step, we're gonna create a material, a texture, and connect these two. Um, using the UV map we just created. Let's get to it. So I can close this window for a bit. I just close by quickly dragging to the right. If you drag it slowly, it's gonna open another window. It's a little annoying, but you get used to it. I'm gonna open another window in the bottom for shader editor by slowly dragging it up. And we can make it all the way up. I'm going to change this um, workspace to shader editor. Now we don't have anything because we don't have anything assigned to these models. After opening the shader editor, I select body, add a new material. 
named it body tail now we have it here and I, I'd like to assign a texture to this material for some reason my screencast isn't working so I'm just gonna have to listen um, I'm gonna press shift a texture image texture and I just added a texture but it's not yet connected to our material so I'm going to connect our color to the base color of the material so the texture changes the color of the material for this tutorial that's what we want to do I'm pressing new image text there and I'm just going to double this I'm pressing OK and I'm choosing the first drop down to close it this is about how pixels um, get painted and now this texture is connected to this material I'm going to repeat the same process for all the objects we have work from the head add new material the same thing shift a here texture image texture choosing the previous texture we just created so our all of our textures are in one single image because remember how we mapped our model where all the unwrapped surfaces are in one single image connecting color again all we want this texture to do is just change the color repeating the same process for the eyes now there you go eye shift a texture image texture choosing the same texture image connecting the color changing it to closest and for the last time image I adding a new texture shift a connecting the color choosing the same um, texture file closest and now all of our textures are connected to our materials let's close this window because we don't need this anymore now I'm opening another window for texture painting and one more for UV mapping UV editor so we can see what we're doing so we already created a map and we already assigned a texture to it so we can just open that texture file and just scroll down to zoom out it looks black for now because we didn't paint it yet in this window while we're still in 3d viewport I'm switching to, if I press the tab, texture paint. This part looks black, the eyes, because that's what we had chosen on object mode. If we want to work with the body, we can just select the body here and go to texture paint. It looks black because that's the default assigned color. I want to change the sizes a little so I have space to um, paint I'm pressing tool and we have brushes and colors here you can press in this little part to add your tools and first thing you'll notice when you start painting is that the brush has a really soft edge for me personally I don't like that so I change fall off into a more straight curve so my strokes are sharper. You can change it based on what you prefer. There are some pre pre-assigned modes. I'll just play around with these. Some things I want to show you. You can just choose a color here and by using fill tool you can just paint the entire object the object you choose here to the color you want 
Notice how on the texture image, it changes the color of the exact map because it knows that if I paint here, show you, if I paint here purple, weather knows that this part is going to get purple because this point in the 3D model is mapped into this point in the 2D image. Let's say you're done with painting this part of the bear. I don't know, something like this. Like a little shirt or something. Um, let's say you don't want to paint the back. To be able to paint the other areas, I'm going to object mode. I'm choosing the part I'd like to paint. It's highlighted and I'm tapping back into texture paint. Notice how the texture disappeared, but don't worry, it's here. This is because our view mode is in report shading, which it which doesn't show the material. If you click on material preview, then you can see the colors. Maybe it's better to keep it on this one. To paint the head, object mode, click that, texture paint. Now you can paint the head. Don't forget the back this 3d I'm just quickly showing you the basics and I'll let you paint to be able to do the eyes select the eyes texture paint paint it the other one chooses texture paint paint it now for the sake of simplicity and because I don't have a drawing tablet it's gonna take me a long time um, I'm going to cut to the final um, product Final colored product again because I don't have a drawing tablet and for the for the sake of simplicity I didn't go crazy but you're definitely welcome to um, I'm going to save this image and now we're done with adding a texture this is how our teddy bear looks at the moment I just want to quickly reiterate that here we have the brush section and you can change the radius of brushes here change the color here so you fall off from here you have the fill tool that you would probably use um, you can just select any color you see by pressing s and it's going to select a color for you and finally to switch between objects to switch between painting specific objects you choose the object tap into texture paint and you can just paint that object and now we can pause the video here, paint your way, and come back when you're done. And once you're done with painting, we can move on to step six, which is creating a scene and rendering. Our last step will be creating a scene and rendering it. Rendering is basically taking a 3D view of your scene and processing that view into a 2D image. This involves your computer calculating where the light hits. So it's a heavy process, but don't worry. There are different render engines that you can choose based on your computer's power. Now we're going to adjust the light because every scene comes with a built-in light. We're gonna add a drop background and we'll adjust the camera and render. So this is how my workspace looks. I want to close these windows and when you have multiple workspaces open like this, you want to start closing your workspaces from the smallest one. So now this is the front view. As you can see, our bear is a little below the origin and my screencast is back. So we're going to create a child parent relationship in our model. I'm choosing all the objects in my scene by holding shift. And I'm pressing Control P, set parent to object. Now we can move all of the teddy together. But I'm just going to cancel this move because it's in every direction. I'm going to press G and Z to only move it upwards. I love this stand, so I think this is good. Now we're going to add a drop as you said so I'm pressing shift a mesh a plane I'm just scaling it 
up and in edit mode in edge select mode i'm selecting this edge i'm pressing e and c to only extrude on the vertical direction in other words z-axis like so in object mode i want to make this a little bigger i'm pressing s and x to size it in one single direction in modifiers i'm going to add a bevel modifier to make it a little smoother around here i'm going to increase the segments maybe five or six six looks good to me or maybe a little bit more let's go with 10 to make sure that it's soft enough i'm going to apply this i'm going to position my teddy um rotate and press c so it's only one single direction notice how here the teddy's legs are a little below the drop so you want to move him up a little bit more g z and then right when he touches i'm confirming it by left click we want to have a preview of what the render would look like and for that um, switching to render the viewport shading mode which gives you a preview of how it's going to look like now you can see that you can kind of see the faces so that's why making sure that i'm in object mode i'm clicking the teddy right click shade smooth i'm doing this for all objects and he's looking Clean this way. So I want to move this slight um, G and then Y to bring it forward a little, maybe bring it down as well. Oh, it looks dramatic. And I want to have one more light, so I'm going to copy and paste this light. And with G and X, I'm going to move it to this side. But I want this light to be a little softer. So in light tab, which is this icon over here, I'm going to adjust the strength of this second light. Maybe 700. That's good. And I don't want this color. Since he has this unconventional teddy bear look, uh, it reminds me of forest a little. I want to have a more natural Color. So I'm going to go with something yellowish. It was for this light source. I'm clicking the other one and changing the color accordingly. Maybe something greenish. I want to rotate him a little bit more. So I'm pressing R and Z. Actually, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to move him. Um, towards the front of the drop a little bit. So I'm pressing G and Y, moving him a little closer, repeating the same for the light sources. Yeah, I like this. And I want to increase the size of the drop as well. S for size, X for the X axis, and I'll make it way bigger. And probably on the y axis as well i'm gonna increase strength a little maybe a thousand for this one maybe a little stronger I like how he looks right now, and this is entirely up to you. Um, I'm positioning him into the position I want to see him in when the scene is rendered. And you can change the render engine from here, from this tab. Eevee is the fast and safer render agent, and we can change that. We can switch to cycles, which is a more advanced, more natural 
render engine, but it's heavier on your computer. So I would recommend saving your scene by pressing Control S and then attempting to change the render agent. As you can see, we have a way softer look with cycles. Needless to say, it's going to take longer to render. Pressing view, align view, align active camera to view. So now this is what the camera sees. But I think it's too zoomed in. So I'm going to zoom out a little. I'm going to press G and Y to move this camera backwards and maybe now try view. Now I'm pressing render image. Because of some cycles, it's taking a bit. This is the finished rendered uh, result. It took a little bit of time, so I just skipped the waiting for you. And here I'm pressing image, save as, and just renaming it rendered. And now I have this image saved. I'm showing it for another render agent with Eevee. As I said, it's faster less natural, but safer for any computer. I'm pressing render, render image, and it's instant. But as you can see, it's a little less professional compared to the render engine cycles. Name this render two, save as image, and I have these two scenes rendered. And this concludes our last step. Thanks for participating in this brief introduction to Blender. I hope you had fun, learned something new, and made the cutest teddy bear. Here are a few resources for further learning or in case you get stuck. And of course, don't be afraid to say hello and get connected with us virtually. There's so much more to learn about the world of XR. Stop by Studio X to engage with us and learn more. We are located on the first floor of Carlson Library. Thanks for watching.